today we're going to talk about this article on gentrification and redlining and this whole thing on um, in Philadelphia in the Breeze Point neighborhood. And basically the story is is that um, white people are being are being given loans to move into black neighborhoods that are being gentrified. Um, but how this started was that the Community um, Reinvestment Act of 1977 was supposed to prevent redlining, meaning they were supposed to give out loans to help um, black people move into, you know, decent neighborhoods. But what ends up happening is, is that the black people are being denied loans and they're being denied um, the, not only the loans, but access, you know, the loans to help maintain the property. And they're being forced to sell basically from, you know, being denied loans. So if you're giving out, uh, your grandparents have a home and, you know, they want to pass it down, but there's repairs and different things like that. Um, there's an example in the article, a young woman, she's retired. She can't afford the repairs and different things like that. So if you can't afford the repairs, instead of being fined by the city or different things, you're going to have to sell. Now, to me, this begs the question where we want to put everything not be race. Like people want to talk about, well, it's a class issue. It's... Because we, we can talk about racism exists, but we don't really talk about putting race into laws, putting race into the economy, as far as bills and legislation and different things like that. But we use minorities. But minorities, again, it could, can include uh, women, white women, different ethnic groups. Um, but there isn't, it's like we don't really want to focus on black people. Like, and that's kind of the downside, not kind of, but it's a downside of being politically correct as far as politics. And I think Obama, that's, a, that's kind of where he failed a lot when you think about it, where, yes, he talked about racism and his son could have been Trayvon Martin. And he talked about racism a lot, but it was like he never pushed race into legislation. And that's what we kind of, be, we have to really begin to do that to offset, because the people that are denying the loans and denying, you know, when you go and fill out these loans, they know that you're black, they see you. So they can, you know what I mean? They can fight. If, I, I don't know, the easiest way is if you're quote unquote trying to play the race card, right? And the race card is, you know, black people should get this loan. Black people should get loans for houses, but they can obviously deny you and not use race, but use race against you by obviously looking at you. So, and until race is written on paper, until, you know, that begins to be um, inserted into legislature and different things like that, they're always going to be able to use these loopholes and take advantage of us not being represented properly because well, it's not about race and it's not about racism and it's an uh, economic issue, it's a class issue. No, black people are being put out systematically because this reinvestment act was designed as a red lining act. But if they would have specified in the act, we want to preserve black people in these communities. We want to preserve Latinos in their communities. We want to preserve you know, these people and make sure that they come up with affirmative action you know, clearly it's like they're straddling the fence where we know it's racism against black people. We just don't want to say it's black people in the bill or in the legislation. Like the Civil Rights Act. We know, does it say anything about black people or does it say everyone should have the right to vote? 
And this is, this begins to be the problem when you allow people to be inclusive and to take over your uh, activism and different things like that, where, you know, if I'm a minority, you know, this might not affect my group of people as much as it affects yours, but because I'm a minority, I can inject myself into this. Now, this white male was accepted alone. He was this white male was given a loan to move into this community. Yet, people cannot afford to live in their communities um, and rebuild their homes. So, but he's saying that he wish he still brought the home though. But he's saying that you know uh, black people should be given their homes and different things like that. But he still brought it. So. And there's a lot of white people that are moving into this community. And it's terrible. And that's the thing with gentrification. It's so many different ways that it's used to destroy the preservation of culture in communities and black people. And it's just, you know, it's a multi-headed beast you know you cut one head off another head grows back you cut a leg off it's gonna grow two more legs it's, so I'm just you know this video is just to raise awareness it's different issues within this one issue where there's the loophole in this act and you know when we don't include race in legislature that legislation that's how these things happen because you know it opens the door for other people to take advantage of and you know there's some black people where they're like you know they want to sugarcoat it and well everyone is affected and everyone is being you know it's hard for everyone and it's you know this and that and black people are saying some people might say well you know they don't want to upset people but this is when you the, the more you do that, where you refrain from actually saying what it is, these things continue to happen. So stay tuned for more news.